the Fantasy Source Baseball Podcast. My name is David A. Arnott, sitting here with George Winkler. Last time around with Matt, we talked about the players in the Fantasy Source Roto Raider Top 20. We figured would drop out of that Top 20 by the end of the season. Today, we're talking about the guys who are outside of the Top 20 that we're telling you owners who have them, do not despair. They're getting better. They're really good. Don't worry about that. Everything will be fine. And if you don't have them, try to rip them off of another owner. That's absolutely right. We're only a month into the season, and yet people have been following it so closely on a day-to-day basis, you'd think that the world is ending and the sky is falling for some of these guys. But they're primed to bounce back, and let's talk about some of them. Yeah, I mean, like, let's talk about my favorite guy on this list right now, just in a general sense, David Wright. I mean, he's been one of the very best third basemen in baseball. I mean, if I recall correctly, since he came up as a full-time player in the major leagues, he's doing it again, year after year. I don't know if it's because people remember the nine home run season at City Field and are still spooked by that, or what it is about him that people just kind of lose sight of how amazing he is as a real-life player, and especially as a fantasy player, considering he puts up elite third baseman power numbers average and everything and then throws in 15 to 20 steals with it yeah absolutely he's the gold that you want that five category producer who can give you a 300 average 30 home runs 100 rbis 20 steals 80 r or 80 runs scored but you know he's off to a slow start with his batting average this year you mentioned the low homer season two years ago his obp was down last year he plays in new york so there's a there's a big focus on him there but yeah, I mean, he has a 308 bat- career batting average after the All-Star break, so if you can get your hands on this guy, go for it. Uh, the other guy, my second favorite guy on this list that we have here of guys, again, reiterating, outside of the top 20 in Fantasy Source Baseball's Roto Raider, is Justin Upton. Love him. Love him. The guy, I mean, Everyone seems to forget he's, what, 23 years old still? And... You know what, just because he does, doesn't hit like Joe DiMaggio every year doesn't mean he's not amazing, and he's he's putting it all back together again this year. Yeah, his 257 ISO is right now on pace for a career high. He's on pace for 34 home runs. The power is definitely there. Uh, the problem with him right now is the batting average. It's around 270, and not that that's bad, but for him to get into the top 20 in the Roto Raider, he needs to kick that back up to 300 where he had it in 2009. I mean, essentially, let's just put this into context. Shin Su Chu, fantasy favorite, is a guy who, who everyone expects to hit 290, 25 home runs, 20 steals. Well, Justin Upton is essentially doing that. He's outpacing that this year, and his batting average he just needs another more a, a blooper to fall in here or there. He'll be doing that. And it's it's a little bit less sexy to go after him than the choo-choo train at this point, I think, in their careers. But Upton is every bit the ball player that Chu is. Every bit the ball player with a little bit more power and plays in a favorable ballpark. Yeah, so, and, yeah, he's, and, he's yeah, and if out there for the take. And if you're in a keeper lead, even more desirable because, again, he's only 23. Correct. Let's talk about the pitchers that we see here. I see Clayton Kershaw on your list. What is it about him that makes you think he's going to be rising up in the rankings. Well, he he was fantastic the last two years, and a lot of people you know, pegged him as a Cy Young candidate in the National League this year. He has two bad outings where he has four walks in one and then five walks in another, and that's affected his overall numbers. But as long as he keeps those walks down, you know, he'll be able to pitch deeper in games. Uh, he racks up a pretty good pitch count because he likes to strike people out, so... But that's a good thing. That, like that's that. a great thing, and he is giving up a few too many home runs this year, but everything should normalize. Um, pitches in a favorable ballpark, and Clayton Kershaw should be excellent to, for here, from here on out. I mean, this may sound like a little bit of exaggeration, but we're both Giants fans, and we remember when Tim Lincecum, I believe it was in August of last year, had three straight starts mm-hmm. where he just absolutely lost it, got knocked around, there was much panic in those days. It's unbelievable how a guy can be so good for so long and then he goes through a stretch of like three games and people are ready to jump off the bridge. But, uh, you know, he gets it back and Lincecum was excellent down the stretch and in the playoffs. So, uh, you know, Clayton Kershaw, he's young, he's good, and he has a great strikeout pitch. He'll be fine. Now, I, we are talking about a lot of prominent players, especially in fantasy circles, guys who should not be 
new names or anything like that. And, and yes, this is about reassurance. It's about reassurance that the guy that you drafted in the first, second, maybe even fifth round, you don't need to jump ship on him yet. Anybody else that you're seeing out there that you might actually be thinking, you know what, an owner might actually be considering trading him, don't do something crazy. Yeah, I mean, you remember the skit on Saturday Night Live with the Stuart Smalley. This is your daily affirmation, and I'm giving it for Adrian Gonzalez and uh, Mark Teixeira, two first basemen in the AL East. And uh, Gonzalez, people are talking about him hitting 50 home runs when he came over to Boston. Now they've toned that down to let's get him to 30, and actually he's on pace for 11 right now. But uh, he's hitting 356 in his last uh, 15 games, and you know, it's just a matter of power. Um, perhaps the, the off-season problem with the shoulder, uh, maybe he's still getting rounding into form. Uh, with Teixeira, you know, he, he got off to the blazing start. The average is still only 253 in April, but actually that's good for him. Mm -hmm. You know, 253 for him is good in April. And, you know, the slugging and the OPS are still there. The average hopefully will come up to where it was uh, two years ago, which was in the 290-300 range, and that would get him in the top 20 in the Roto Raiders. I guess what I would say to those owners is you're not going to get the month of April back. You're just not getting it back. It's water under the bridge. you got to look forward and see. I mean, obviously the past matters because it helps, it helps give you an idea of what's going to happen in the future, but you've also got, in these, in these guys' cases, six, seven years of history in order to tell you what's going to happen in the future, and you got to trust that more than the past month. Yeah, and there's no reports out that say that these guys are hurt or battling, you know, battling anything like that, so they should be back, and they should be doing just fine, and you don't want to be the guy who trades them away and <laughs> has to hear it for the rest of the season. You were the guy who traded away Adrian Gonzalez when he was on pace for 11 home runs, and he did, in fact, end up hitting 30 home runs that year. Yes, and hitting 320 and winning the American League MVP, or as the case may be. You, you know, you don't want to be that guy. He, you drafted him in the first round for the entire season. You didn't draft him for April. I mean, that's the way I, I think about it. But anyway, George, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.